Honey, I feel like I'm not feeling very well. Headness and dizziness and my body temperature is also very hot. Looks like I've caught a cold. Can you come home early with me? What the hell are you talking about? Caught a cold? Someone like you, who just hangs around at home all day, gets sick? How useless are you? What? What are you saying? I need you here with me. I don't feel well at all, honey. Are you crazy? You have a disease in your body and it's best for you to stay away from me. You must quarantine yourself until you recover, understand? From the bottom of my heart, I don't want to infect you. I'll go to another room to sleep and we won't sleep together until I'm getting well. But I need someone to take care of me. Can you buy me medicine and cook me some soup? What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? I am the man in the family, the main breadwinner. Why do I have to take care of you? That's your duty. You have to take care of me all your life, you useless wife. You just stay at home all day like a parasite, spending my money and gambling like an old hag. It's ridiculous when you say you need me to take care of you. Why do you say that? I'm sick and I need care for my husband. This is easy to understand. Why do you have such an attitude towards your sick wife? Stop saying stupid things. Tonight my colleagues will come over to eat and we will have a party. Wear a mask and clean the house thoroughly. I don't want my colleagues to see any mess at home. Got it? And one more thing. Don't forget to pack up your necessary belongings and move to the basement. Sleep there. You need to be quarantined. I need to confine you because I don't want you to infect everyone. Have you lost your mind? Really, nothing to say. One more thing. You're supposed to cook a big meal for me to entertain my colleagues, but I don't want to eat infected food. So, please order some food and beer for me. And don't forget to wear a mask when receiving those food items. <laughs> Wait, Henry. I don't think I can do it. I'm so tired right now that I can't stand. I can't even say a word. Can you ask your colleagues to come over another day? Are you crazy? How can I postpone it to another day, when I have already perfectly planned the party today? Just because you're sick, I have to delay? No way. But I'm sick, and there's nothing else I can do. You should spend your time taking care of me, as a husband. It's definitely just a common cold. Put on your mask and keep doing your housework. I'm about to leave work and go home. Do as I say. Pack your things and live in the basement until you get better. Wait, Henry? Are you sure that I'll have to sleep in the basement again? There's no air conditioning, no electricity. It's even dusty. How can I sleep there? I can go to another room to sleep. But don't force me to sleep in the basement, please. You want to infect your husband? I need to go to work, so I can't let myself get sick. Besides, my mother will be very angry if she knows you infected me. So please, be obedient and sleep in the basement. It's so troublesome. This sounds like a punishment more than anything. I shouldn't be punished just for catching a cold. Shut up! I don't care! Don't even think about walking around the house. Your shelter is just in the basement. But I have a high fever. I need to sleep in a bed to get better. I don't think I can get better if I stay in the basement. Like I said, it's damp down there. That can't be good for me. Oh my god! You should be grateful that I still let you stay in the house. If you say another word, I will kick you out immediately. Understand? Put on your mask and clean up. You're useless. I can't believe you treat me like that. This is when a husband should show his responsibility, his caring to a wife, but no. You cannot do it. You're a lousy person. Whatever. You should just be grateful that I'm providing you with a place to sleep. You can't expect more than that from me. Your health is for you to deal with. I don't have the time to worry about you. Just stay quiet and stay in the basement until you are ready to do your duties again. You got that? Don't even think about coming up until your fever is completely gone. Henry, please answer me. I need your help. What happened? 
Stop bothering me like that. I really don't feel well. I'm having a bit of trouble breathing, and the situation is getting worse. I need to go to the hospital. Please, can you take me to the hospital now? Are you crazy? Why does a person with a common cold need to go to the hospital? What a waste of expense. Just get some sleep, and everything will be back to normal soon. Stop bothering me. My colleague is here, and we are enjoying the party. Don't forget to be extremely quiet. I forbid you to make any noise. You're such a nuisance. No, Henry, I'll faint here. I feel like I don't have any strength anymore. Please, take me to the hospital. Or at least let me go into the fifth bedroom and rest on the bed. Fainting? Go ahead. You'll have to wake up on your own. Do you know how expensive hospital expenses are? You're a freeloader, so don't waste my money on useless things like this. What? How could you treat me in that kind of manner? I have difficulty breathing, and it's even hard to hold the phone. Please, Henry. Then don't call me anymore. Don't bother in ruining my party. Everyone is having fun. Remember not to show up and upset my colleagues. Can you hear the music? It's exciting, right? Right above your head. We are having the best party of our lives. It's been such a long time since I've had such a comfortable party. It was great without your presence. <laughs> are you really happy when your wife is in this state? Poor me. You're insane. Shut up and stop whining like that. Hey, my dear daughter-in-law. Your father and I will return home tomorrow after a very wonderful trip. I think we should have dinner together. It's been a long time since we last saw each other, right? I want to give you guys some little gifts I bought during my trip. Where are you now? What do you think about this? Mom, actually I'm at home right now. But I got sick and don't feel well at all. What? You're sick? Why didn't you say anything to me? Have you had dinner yet? Has Henry brought medicine for you? I feel exhausted and ill. Now I have no more energy. Sorry, Mom. Are you okay? You should go to the hospital to check up on everything. But Henry... Henry? Where is he now? Quickly tell your husband to take you to the hospital immediately. I don't want things to get worse. Especially your health problems. Yesterday, Henry and his co-workers were having a party at home. And Henry forced me to sleep in the basement to avoid infecting him and his co-workers. Now wait a minute. Did you type that correctly? Do you mean bedroom and not the basement? There must be some sort of typo. No, I really do mean basement. Yeah, you must be pulling my leg. It's taking me a lot of energy to be a part of this conversation, so I'm not really in the mindset to make jokes right now. I'm so sorry, Mom, but this fever is getting the best of me. Looking at the screen on my phone is getting harder and harder to do, so I'll talk to you later. No, wait. Don't go yet. Rosie, what is going on? What's happening? A sick person like you is staying in the basement? Yes, that's right. Henry thought that this was the best way for us to distance ourselves from each other. How does his thought process even work? Oh, is that what happened? Well, it doesn't matter now. I'm just glad I have a place to sleep right now. I'm really sorry, but I must go now. Don't go to sleep yet. I think I really need to ask you a few more questions. Sorry, Jenny. It's getting harder and harder for me to type. I can't go on any longer. Good night. You're really in the basement now? In your condition? Really? Rosie, will you really be okay down there? It's an unfinished basement. I'll be right there after I get home. How's the fever? Are you feeling better? I bet you feel better after a long sleep. Now get up and clean up from my party last night. It's time for your duty. <laughs> and don't forget to wear a mask. Unfortunately, my fever is still quite high. 
I did take some medicine, and that is helping a bit. But my fever still hasn't broken. Still hasn't broken? Even though you've been sleeping for half the day? Man, you really are useless. What? It's not like I asked to be sick. Well, I guess that means you'll be living in the basement for a while. Sucks to be you. Listen here, I better not see you when I get home after work. You have to clean the house thoroughly while I go to work. You need to eat and shower before I come home. I don't want to run into you. When I'm back, don't even think about coming up from your cave. What? You're going to make a sick person clean up the house, shower, and eat by herself? You won't even think about helping me or taking care of me. I'm a man, and men don't do stuff like that. A wife should be taking care of the man, not the other way around, so you can figure things out on your own. But normally, I take care of you in the house every day. I don't think it would be much to ask that you do the same thing during these circumstances. I don't think I'm asking for anything ridiculous or unreasonable. I just need a bit of nursing. But you just don't care. You don't care that your wife has an extremely high fever. I already said that. It's a wife's duty to take care of her husband. Stop being so argumentative. This isn't a matter that is up for debate. It's a simple concept. What on earth? Get it through that thick, thick head of yours. Because there is no way I'm nursing a sick woman. First of all, nursing is a woman's job. Secondly, if I were to do that, there's a chance that I'd get sick too. There's no way in hell that I'm going to get sick when I know I can stay perfectly happy and healthy by avoiding you. I simply just can't get sick for any reason. I'm a super important person in my company. The company can't run without me. Can you handle the responsibility of me not going to work? I don't think so. Maybe. What does handling the responsibility really entail in this case? There's no way you can. You're a mere housewife. You have no economic value. Mere housewife? Listen closely. No one cares that you are sick. You can do whatever you want. Not me, though. If I'm sick, it's going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. So it just doesn't make sense for me to take care of you now or ever. My safety comes before your health at all times. You need to stop just thinking about yourself. You need to think about how to keep me safe as well. You're right. I'm going to start thinking about it. But before I do, I need to think about divorce first. Excuse me? While you were giving that impassioned speech about how you can't even take care of me, I decided on getting a divorce. Henry, we're done here. I want a divorce. Now, wait a second. Bringing up divorce like this is too sudden. That fever of yours must be making you delusional. I'm not feeling very well right now, so I'm going to sleep. But as soon as my fever goes down, I'm going to start the divorce proceedings. Just please sign the divorce papers when they are ready, okay? Fine, sure. Whatever you say. Don't come crying to me when you regret your decision down the line. Hey, I went down to the basement today, and I didn't see you. Where are you? Oh, did you just notice now? I left the house a week ago. What do you mean, left the house? Exactly that. I'm at your parents' house right now. I've also been here for a week now. They were kind enough to let me in and take care of me. You're at my parents' place? What are you bothering them for? And how could you just go to my parents without telling me? This just adds to how pathetic you are. And how dare you make my mom take care of you? Who do you think you are? Jenny was the one who invited me over. She came to the house while you were at work and got me out of the basement. She was in our house? She said that it would be ages before I would get better if I stayed in that dark, damp place. She helped me up the stairs and drove me to her house. Oh, and I bet you just loved getting all that attention. You probably even acted more sick than you really are, just to get her sympathy. I see now. So this is what you do? You're not getting any attention from me, so instead, you go to my mom instead. Henry Matthew Levi. I can't believe my son can be this heartless. I raised you to be better. Ma, is that you? 
Oh man, Ma, did you really have to say my full name? I do. I have been sitting next to poor Rosie this whole time, and all I can say is that I am appalled. Appalled! Where on earth did you get an attitude like that? You sure as heck didn't get it from me. How could you treat your sick wife like this? Just calm down, Ma. There's no reason for you to be angry. I'm beyond angry right now. I am furious. Rosie told me everything since the beginning. You confined a sick woman with a high fever to a dirty, unfinished basement? Well, I didn't confine her. We just needed the social distancing. Ma, you understand, right? I can't get sick because of my job. The only way to keep me healthy is for us to socially distance. There was no other choice. How can you call yourself a man? If that was the case, you could have given Rosie the bedroom and you should have moved into the living room. But I'm the man of the house. I shouldn't be sleeping on the couch. A man of the house knows how to take care of his family. There's nothing wrong with sleeping on the couch for only a few days. It won't kill you. But Ma... A sick wife should be mindful not to get her family sick as well. On the other hand, a husband should be thoughtful of his sick wife and wish for her to recover as soon as possible. That is what it means to be married and to be husband and wife. You can't be selfish and only think about yourself, you selfish brat. Why are you only getting angry at me, Ma? I'm distancing myself from her, that's all. The only place where she could go was the basement. That's what I thought you meant. She could stay there without being disturbed. It made sense. I can't understand what you're thinking in your mind, Henry. We have a room that she could stay in. Why didn't you tell her about that? You should have brought her over right away. What? You said that? I was so worried about dear Rosie. Her forehead was practically burning when I found her. I was also worried that you would develop the same high fever. I wanted you to take her to me so I could take care of her. I thought that my caring son would be able to make things right. But instead, I came face to face with this monster. What happened to you? Now I feel like you're attacking me. I wouldn't know all of that if you didn't tell me. If you want to nurse Rosie back to health, you should have told her that yourself. All you had to say was come over. Just use that thick head of yours for one second. I'm her mother-in-law. It'd be super intimidating for her just to go over to her in-laws in her weakened state. A woman has her pride as well. She just can't be begging for help from others. That's why you needed to step in and suggest it to her. She would be more willing to accept that help if offered by her husband. How was I supposed to understand that? You can't blame this on me. You don't even know your own mother. Gosh, I made it easy for you to understand. But even if I didn't, this is your wife. You can't even take care of her. Even if she isn't your wife, she is a human being. You can't treat her like that. Now I can see why she's asking for a divorce. You need to give her one. A man who can't even take care of his own wife has no right to have his own family. What? Now you're on her side. How could you tell your son to get a divorce and to also blame it on me? What kind of parent wants their son's marriage to fail? It's hard for me to say it as your parent, but it is something that must be said. You aren't mature enough to be married. I'm coming over now with the papers. Just sign them. I'll take responsibility this time for your failed marriage. Please, Rosie, help me. Could you please come over now? What? What is it? I caught a cold, you see. I also have a fever, and it's very high. Then you should stay home and rest. I'm not there to help you anymore. You have the whole house to yourself, so you can move around freely. Yeah, but I still need your help. I need you to look after me. This fever is making it hard to do anything, and I'm hungry. Please bring me something to drink. I'm so thirsty. I don't even have to tell you what I like, right? Bring some drinks and other stuff over. You know which one. Mineral lemon water and canned peaches. That's right. I knew you would know, my darling. That's my girl. Be a dear and buy three of each. While you're at it, could you make that chicken noodle soup? 
That soup you always make when I'm feeling down. I won't feel better until I eat your soup. Wow, you're asking a lot from your ex. You should ask your mom to shop and cook for you. I tried to do that already. I called my parents and let them know as soon as I got sick, but she wouldn't help me at all. She told me to just stay in the basement until I'm better. That's the Jenny I know and love. There's actually this girl that I met after we broke up. But when I told her about my condition, she refused to help me. She said that she was scared that she would get sick too. Then why are you turning to me? We have nothing to do with each other anymore. It's not my job to take care of you. I know it's not your job, but you were my wife just a few months ago. I think it's a bit much to say. We have nothing to do with each other. I know that you won't be able to leave me alone if you knew that I needed you. You understand the state that I'm in, right? You know how hard a high fever is to deal with. Oh, yeah. I definitely know how that feels. But when I was in the state that you are currently in, you wanted me to stay in the basement. I had a fever, but I was also shaking from the chills. All my muscles and joints were hurting. But again, you told me to get down to the basement. An unfinished basement that was dark, damp, and smelled of mold. I'm sorry about that, okay? I apologize for the way I treated you back then. So now, will you come and help me? If you came over right now, we can even start over. I'll even consider marrying you again. What? Marry you again? This has been a while since the divorce. You've calmed down, right? You made such an impulsive decision that time that you must be regretting it now. You can fix all that now! Come back to my side and take care of me. I'll forgive that momentary lapse in judgment to marry you again. Do you know what? Th this time, I'll even listen to what you have to say. You can do whatever you want. What are you going on about? I want to eat your soup now. Come over with a marriage license. I'll sign it while you make the soup. I'm afraid I can't do that now. You see, I'm on vacation with your parents right now. We went to Bali together. What? You're in Bali? That's right. So you see, I can't make chicken noodle soup for you now. You can make it yourself. The recipe is really simple. By the way, a marriage license isn't a paper that you can just pick up anywhere. Besides, who the hell would want to marry someone like you again? The thought of getting back together with you is simply revolting. Who would want a selfish, self-centered baby for a husband? I don't need you. What? You can't mean that. Wait a second. Here, e even before that, though. Why are you with my parents? What do you mean that you're on vacation with them? Well, I got my health back after our divorce was finalized. In these past three months, I was also able to find a job and my own place to live in. So Jenny suggested that we do something to celebrate my new beginnings. That's why you're on a vacation? A mother abandoning her son? You ignoring your ex-husband? Even though I'm suffering so badly with this fever, how could you guys be enjoying yourselves on a vacation somewhere when you know I'm here all by myself? Well, it has nothing to do with me. I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers. Hope you get well soon. Anyway, we're about to hit the beach soon. We're going to have a good time without you. Henry's fever didn't go down for five days. He had to take those days off work. He really believed that the company couldn't run without him, so he tried to go into work even though he was sick. But when he showed up at work, it caused quite a panic because no one wanted to get sick. He was sent home right away. When he did finally return to work, one of the higher-ups called him into their office. He got quite a scolding for putting all of his co-workers' health in danger by coming in while he was sick. They said his actions showed a real lack of judgment and deeply affected their trust. 
Henry was quickly transferred to a different department that day. I heard it was an office that was in the basement floor of the building. As for my ex-mother-in-law, she became a lot kinder to me after the divorce. We became friends. We keep in contact with one another and even meet up once a month or so.